Hi, I'm Patu from FreeFinCal. Let's do a walkthrough tour of the FreeFinCal mutual fund and stock portfolio tracker. The first sheet that you will encounter is the user guide and this gives you the instructions on how, uh, what to do with the other sheets and so on. Then you have a sheet called retirement. So in this sheet, you can enter all your equity mutual fund and debt mutual fund transactions and then you will be able to get the total value XIRR uh, uh, of each fund then you will be able to get the um, uh, equity XIRR that is the overall equity portfolio XIRR debt portfolio XIRR on the total portfolio XIRR you can also enter um, the value of other investments you have stocks or ESOPs uh, or um, uh, PPF, EPF, etc., and then you you can uh, the sheet will calculate the overall portfolio uh, value and the asset allocation. Now I'll give you an example of how to enter uh, transactions in this. Then you also have um, a sheet, uh, sorry, a chart here which will plot the equity mutual fund value and the debt mutual fund value uh, according to date. Uh, the chart will be auto updated uh, every day between 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. You don't need to keep the sheet open. Uh, there's a trigger for the macro that will uh, automatically trigger and uh, the chart will get updated. You don't need to uh, open, keep the sheet open. Also, every time you open the sheet, automatically the uh, the, the current value as per the latest now uh, will be seen and you uh, all the returns etc. will be updated accordingly. Uh, so you have another sheet called a child. This of course meant for the child's future education. You can also rename it. You can duplicate the retirement of the child sheet any number of times and rename it for every goal. Here I have one example of quantum long term equity fund. And again, you can see the uh, uh, XIRR return and so on. And you can assign the asset class for this as equity debt and so on. That's obvious. Now you have to enter the AMFA code of the fund. Uh, it's very easy to find out the AMFA code. I'll explain uh, with an example. Here also you have the chart which will get auto updated. Now, um, so let's do an example. The first thing is to find out the AMFA code. So let's say you have um, an investment in let's say um, access blue chip right so let's go to latest now the sheet so this gives you the uh, latest NAV of all the funds so here you have to find out uh, the AMFI code for access blue chip so you have to just go to uh, uh, the uh, find option and uh, type access blue chip so that will take you right there so you can see here you can see the uh, access blue chip funds are here there are several options you have a direct plan growth then you have direct plan uh, idcw that is the uh, dividend option regular plan growth and the regular plan dividend option you have to be careful because each one has its own amfi code you have to choose the correct one so you have to choose the one for uh, direct plan let's say direct plan growth option you can see here the first numbers that you see here 120465 and then there's a colon so before the colon the numbers before the colon that's your amfi code just copy it then come to uh, retirement here and let's just type that amfi code here and then we'll give it a name axis blue chip we'll just give that uh, you know without space so that will be the fund code now copy that and let's say you're running an SIP in this fund so we'll just go to the SIP sheet and we will just enter this fund code and then we'll go back to the AMFI code and then we'll go back to SIP enter the AMFI code for that and let's say you have an SIP for let's say 25,000 and uh, when did you start the SIP? Let's say you started the SIP uh, in January 2019. Let's do that. Uh, sorry, the month is January 2019. The SIP date is 3rd of the month. So that's it. And it's an ongoing SIP. So you don't need to enter the stop month and the stop year. So once you enter, then you will automatically the SIP sheet will populate the SIP transactions. And here you, you see here this not available means um, the transactions are not yet available, not yet been copied to the sheet. So now let us now first tag the sheet name. Now we want to associate 
uh, this fund with the retirement. So let's now try it as retirement. So it has to be in the retirement sheet and you can see in the retirement sheet, these uh, transactions are not yet copied. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to copy everything. I'm just going to scroll down up to that. So let's, I mean, let me just leave the March one. Let me copy up to February. Let me copy everything except the March one just to illustrate. Go to retirement sheet. Here you have to just go down and you have the fund name, transactions, type of transaction, amount, NAV. So here you can just um, paste and you can just say paste values only and then all the transactions except the last one will be uh, pasted and you can immediately see that it will just take a moment for the NAV to get, uh, yeah. So you now see that the current value is there, the NAV is as per uh, 24th March and the XIRR is 18.8%. Sometimes if the XIRR is very small or uh, uh, no zero or negative, then you may need to give a guess value of minus 0.1 or something like that. It's usually not necessary for large positive numbers, but sometimes if it doesn't, if the XIRR doesn't work, try giving a guess value. That's what is, this is for. That's it. Now, if you go to this SIP sheet, it will, you can, if you scroll back up, it will say there are new SIP transactions which need to be entered. So, um, let's say you ca you did this copy paste exercise up to uh, February. So the next SIP date will be automatically found here. So you have to go here and copy the latest SIP date and then go back to this. Just get rid of this. And So just paste the values alone and then that's the last uh, SIP transaction updated. Now if you go back here and if you just give it a minute that you can see it will come out as entered. That means now all SIP transactions are accounted for in the retirement sheet. Now next month for the April, once the transaction occurs, it will be automatically populated here. And then when you look at the SIP page, it will say one transaction has to be copied, some transaction or one transaction has to be copied you have to copy that. If you don't uh, open the sheet for let's say six months, then six SAP transactions will be available automatically. You just need to copy paste them into the correct sheet. Now, if you have multiple SIPs running, you can um, either you can, uh, you know, find the transactions one after the other in the same sheet, or you can just duplicate the sheet into multiple sheets and you can just have one one sheet for one one SIP and you, you make sure you um, you know, associate them with the correct uh, uh, page. So, for example, Access Blue Chip is an SIP for retirement. Suppose you have, uh, let's say, Parak Parik Flexi Cap for your child, then you have to associate it with the child uh, sheet, whatever name you are given, in this case, child uh, and, and so on. So, that's how you enter the transactions for SIPs. For lump sum, you can simply, uh, you know, enter them directly. For, for So, let's say, for example, uh, I have another uh, uh, fund. Uh, let's say QLT, Quantum Long Term Equity and the AMFI code for that fund is, I already know as 103490. So I'm going back, I'm just going to go back to this retirement page and I'm just going to type Quantum Long Term Equity and I have some transactions here. I have made uh, some transactions. So I'm just going to copy that. These are lump sum transactions. Let's say I'm just copy that and you have to paste them uh, here. Sorry, I'm just going to go here, go to the end. And you just need to paste them, just paste the values alone, and then you have all those. It doesn't need to be any any order. You can have that uh, some quantum long term transactions in between access blue chip. It doesn't matter. The dates doesn't uh, need not be chronological. It can be in any order. It will take care automatically. And then you now have quantum long term equity for those transactions as per the latest now is. 13.4% XIRR. Now you can see the overall equity XIRR combined combining these two is 15% and uh, uh, there's no debt uh, transaction. So the total portfolio XIRR is 100% equity and that's just 15% uh, and so on. So that's fairly obvious to see. Now this, uh, the value of this total equity, uh, um, you know, portfolio will keep updating every day. Uh, in this chart automatically you don't like I said it will be updated between 5 to 6 a.m. every day you don't need to keep the sheets open you can keep it closed um, you can even if you are seeing after six months you will have all the data there 
and you can uh, see the chart if you think there are too many data points in the chart you can just go to the trigger so if you go here go to the app scripts then you have triggers you have uh, this is a new sheet okay since i made a copy the sheet, uh, trigger will not be there uh, but i'll just show you uh, but in the sheet that you you have you will have the trigger but i'll just show you how to add the trigger it's easy to see uh, go here just say portfolio and then um, go here time driven trigger and then you can go here to day timer i have cho uh, chosen 5 am to 6 am every day if you don't want that you can have a weekly trigger monthly trigger and so on so I've just set five uh, day timer 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. and then if you save it, uh, save it, it'll come. It'll ask you to choose the account and so on. Uh, you know, just for accepting the, uh, you know, uh, the, to run and so on. I don't want to do it now. Let me just cancel. But this is how uh, you have to add the trigger or edit the trigger in the sheet that you already have. The trigger will be there. You don't need to do. You don't need to add the trigger, but you can edit it to weekly or monthly or whatever if you think that too many data points are coming. That's entirely uh, up to you right so we have covered that then there is suppose you have you're doing lump sum transactions and you have the transaction dates you have the fund names you have the amounts but you don't know the nav so you can just type the fund name the mfi code and type the dates for which you need the nav then it will give you the nav on all those dates so it's a quick way to find the uh, find the nav on any date um, from 3rd april 2006 onwards uh, for any fund uh, with this uh, find now page uh, that's about it SIP you already seen latest now is just you don't need to do anything here it will just get updated with the latest now then I have a very basic goal analysis sheet uh, the instructions given here are uh, uh, fairly self-evident you just need to enter data and it will tell you uh, uh, you know it will automatically fetch the um, uh, mutual fund holdings from the retirement page for retirement calculator and also this you can uh, this uh, i have written child and uh, this is for the child goal and you can it'll automatically fetch the data for from the child page you can also copy paste it for other goals it's fairly self-evident on how to do but this is very basic uh, we recommend using the robo advisory tool uh, for uh, tracking your goal uh, uh, you know how close you are to approaching your uh, goal corpus and so on those kind of insights these are very ballpark estimates don't take them too seriously this is just for a rough insight for more detailed calculations we recommend using the robo advisory 